thank you for joining us. First of all, everyone out there in the interwebs world, world oh. interwebs world. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm a little flustered. I'm sitting here. I'm very lucky to be sitting here with Brian Young and Irina Kaplan from the Poulenc Trio. I was saying it wrong. It was um, the Poulenc Trio when, in my mind before, but then I was informed today that it's the Poulenc Trio because... Well, no, I think you were saying it right if you're saying French pronunciation, which is Poulenc, Poulenc. I think, right? Okay. But, but it's apparently the family name is Poulenc, Poulenc. for whatever reason. I don't okay. know. Do you know what the reason is? They just want to be That's different. They the want right it to be different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now we all know that the, the correct pronunciation of your group is the Poulenc Trio. That's right. Okay, so you've been together since 2003, yep. you've played all over the country, 45 U.S. states, internationally, where okay. was your, can you think of like off the top of your head where your favorite place to play was, like one of your favorite gigs of the last Here 10 years? Here in Baltimore, of course. Oh, what a great answer, yeah. Irina. Oh, that's a good answer. Mine would be St. Petersburg, I think, in Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Really I mean, if we're good. talking internationally, yes, this yeah. is my hometown, and of course that, that was my favorite yeah, our hometowns, Baltimore, hometowns. St. Petersburg. Okay, I like that. Yes, and it connects you to the, both of those yeah. places. And I also realized Irena and I were talking earlier, and I was saying the name of her hometown incorrectly as well. So the proper way of pronouncing St. Pronouncing Petersburg is... Sankt Petersburg. Sankt Petersburg. Okay, we got it. <laughs> So Irina was trained in Russia, mm -hmm. and now she's on the, the staff, the faculty for the Peabody Conservatory yeah, for 20 yeah. years. Yes, I, so I went to uh, St. Petersburg Conservatory, which is a very famous place in Russia, and I'm actually very privileged to, stu you know, to study uh, um, at the conservatory that Tchaikovsky and Shostakovich wow. and Prokofiev graduated from. So it was a wonderful place. But um, I found uh, another great and interesting and uh, wonderful place here in Baltimore. Actually, it's interesting that uh, St. Petersburg Conservatory and Peabody Conservatory were found uh, in the same year. Oh, really? So they both, a couple of years ago, they celebrated 150th anniversary. That's one, what a nice yeah. dovetailing, and also yeah. that you get to bring those two places yes. together in, in your person right. as well. Yeah. So Brian, where did you study? So I grew up in Washington, in okay. D.C., and uh, I went through the youth orchestra program there in D.C. Now, D.C., when I was coming through, had got rid of all of their music and all of their schools. And so Sounds they, familiar. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a normal <laughs> thing, but I think D.C. was ahead of the game in that, in that kind of thing. And so if you wanted to be a musician in D.C., you had to go through the D.C. youth orchestra program. That's where lots of people went through. And so from the age of 11, I was a bassoonist. So you started on, a bassoon is kind of an interesting inter instrument to sort of jump in on. It's, I feel like a lot of us start on piano. Well, I started on, I played violin for okay. a little while, and I was a terrible, terrible violinist. <laughs> like, really, really terrible. And it so happened the bassoon class was right next to the violin class. And so I'd go take my little violin case, and I'd look, and I'd see the bassoonists, and they looked cool, and they sounded really great. And I thought, that's the, you know, that is the instrument. That's me. the first thing I think of when I think of bassoonists, too. I'm just like, that looks cool. That looks cool. That's because yeah. I'm a super you, nerd. Do you have a picture of you playing the bassoon? You, you, so yeah. when we recorded Mob Town Moon, um, we were, when we were recording Brian's parts for the Mob Town Moon recording, I do this all the time. Can I play your instrument? Huh? And he said yes. And so yeah. you showed me quickly how to play it. And I and got, you got an a octave. sound right away. Yeah. I got you, a yeah, sound and then yeah. an octave yeah, from I was that. Impressed. I was and very yes, impressed. we have video of that. Yeah. And I will be at some point editing right. that video. That somewhere and we'll put it somewhere yeah. because it's a very funny outtake. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yes. So the Poulenc Trio, um, you guys, on your biography, you mentioned that the purpose of putting the trio together, not only to enjoy time together and playing the repertoire that you appreciate, but that the music that you're promoting is the music of your roots. So Pan-American, Eastern European, African, and Jewish roots. Right. And there are these great composers listed on their biography page, and their website is poulenctrio.org, right? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So P-O-U-L-E-N-C trio.org and I'll post that in the chat in a minute um, you can find information about all three players your upcoming season but also the list of your influences and people that the composers that you've enjoyed playing and many of which I had not heard of and I was excited to sort of start discovering them and I want to mention them here because they're names that 
not that I have any breadth of classical knowledge, but it was wonderful to sort of be introduced to these people. So Paquito, Paquito de Rivera, um, Carlos Mendina, Yakov Yakulev, and I'm going to mess up this last one, but I'm going to try to practice it. Natalia Medvedovskaya. Oh, that's good. That's perfect. That was yes. really good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the composers you should look up, and I'll type those names in a second at the chat so you can look at them. Um, but I just, I feel like one of the things I love about the show is being exposed to names that I hadn't heard before and yeah. new artists to discover as well. Well, and that's the thing that we're all about is, you know, for 10 years, we've been trying to get new music for this group. I mean, it's uh, oboe, bassoon, and piano. Yes. And it's not, so in, in chamber music, classical chamber music, the standard is uh, string quartet. Yes. You know, or, 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 a, piano or a piano trio, trio yeah. which is piano, uh, violin, and cello. And so we're kind of, you know, we even go places where they say, you know, we're so happy to have the freak group come out. <laughs> because usually in a lot of the places that we play, they, all, they always have string groups. They always yeah. have, you know, uh, the traditional thing. Which we can agree are fine, but it can be They're all the fine, same. They're fine, but they can be the same. Yeah. Yeah. trios yeah. or quartets we can have in this And board. people, I think people are, are surprised <laughs> a lot of times when they hear the sound of our group. I mean, they don't know the sound of the bassoon. They don't know the sound of the oboe. And so we go, and, and so what we try to do is we commission a lot of music, and we try to get at least two new composers to, to write something for us every year. And so we That's have, amazing. Yeah, and so we've, we've bought 20, 25 new pieces uh, you know, into existence for this group of, of instruments. That's such an amazing idea to have your trio be the engine that's fueling... Um, the creation of new music from living composers. Right. I think when a lot of people who are not in the classical world think of classical music, they think of the, the majors, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. They might get as far as Shostakovich or Stravinsky. Um, I had never heard of Messiaen, which we were talking about a few minutes mm -hmm. ago. Um, but there are living composers who are creating incredible music. And for you guys to, to be commissioning these composers and supporting that community as well and exposing the world to their music. Right. The oboe, and I feel like the oboe is to my ear and the orchestra are very recognizable, but I have such limited experience with the bassoon that right. now that I've gotten to know you better and work with you, I'm starting to hear that tone so much more. Yeah. It's such a beautiful, rich tone, and it reminds me of the way that the viola sits in the orchestra, that the viola is so essential to the, or essential to the orchestra, but people don't really, it's sort of maligned. They're just like, eh, the viola. Oh, it's like having yeah. a PBJ sandwich, right? Without the peanut butter. It's a, I know, that's a good way that glue that okay. holds things together a little bit. And, uh, it's a beautiful it, tone, yeah. It's yeah. Not, there's nothing sharp about it. There, it's, it's very much a, a deep voice. And, I mean, how would you describe it? Well, composers those? a lot of times use the bassoon as uh, sort of a, kind of a, a personable kind of mellow instrument. So you mentioned Shostakovich, for instance. Shostakovich, if you ever listen to a Shostakovich symphony, you'll hear a lot of bassoon solos. And there, mm -hmm. and he uses it as almost kind of his voice in a way. And so you'll hear, you know, the orchestra doing its thing, and then you'll hear the bassoon say some kind of long, you know, melody. Um, People know the bassoon as the voice of the grandfather in Peter and the Wolf. Yes, you know, true. Yes, uh, that kind of thing. And you know, I, I think it's uh, it's a beautiful sound. It, it really, the first time I heard the bassoon, I thought, "That's yeah, that's it." That's, it struck I, you. I want to, I want to play that. I want to do that. So tell me the difference between d double reed and single reed on the instrument itself. So I have my reed here. Yeah. And uh, the bassoon is called a double reed instrument because. Unlike a clarinet or a saxophone, which has a single piece of bamboo that goes into a mouthpiece, the bassoon and the oboe have a double reed. And so we take a piece of bamboo and we fold it over and we tie it and we form a hole in the back and then we clip off the, the end. And the way it makes sound is that's the, you know, that's the vibration that goes. That sound. Yeah. That has to also be an instrument on its own. I mean, I feel like I've heard that in Peter Gabriel music, especially in yeah. that soundtrack that he did when the pa for the Passion of the Christ. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, it's sound you know, it's a really, instrument. it's a very. I mean, we should commission something. Yeah. For yeah. It's just for, <laughs> for the read. read. Yeah. It's just for reads, the read. <laughs> well, we have so uh, one of the other pieces of uh, composers that we're doing now is uh, a guy named Octavio Vasquez, and he's a Spanish composer. lives in New York now, and he has a piece where we start 
without reeds on the instruments at all. And so we're just basically blowing through the instrument, you know, a lot of air. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, there are all kinds of things that living modern composers yeah. can do. By the way, we're going to premiere his piece here in Baltimore on <clears throat> February 28th. Third, third, third uh, the Engineers Club, um, where we're playing, uh, we're part of Concert Artists of Baltimore um, series, um, playing our concert there, our recital. Is that the one that's at the Garrett Jacobs Mansion? No. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're in the Baltimore area on February 23rd at the Garrett J Jacobs Mansion, they are going to be debuting Vasquez's piece. Yes. So you'll get to see this really exactly. innovative, interesting yeah. piece where you're using the instrument in a non-traditional right. way. And also, as well as a very traditional, and Octavio himself is going to come down from uh, New York. And, Oof. Yes. No pressure to play in front of the guy uh, who actually wrote it, right? Guy. We'll work <laughs> with him yeah, yeah. yeah. on yeah. that, so, so he's going to probably be uh, is this the talking debut? a little bit. A uh, Baltimore premiere. We premiered in the East Coast and the New York last year as a part of uh, the Here and Now Festival at the um, Symphony Space. Okay. But yes, it's a Baltimore. And uh, Octavio is also a graduate of, of Peabody Conservatory. It's kind of like home, uh, homecoming for him also. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so February 23rd. You know where you'll be, right? The Garrett Jacobs Mansion, seeing the Poulenc Trio the debut Vasquez's yeah. new, pie, new yeah. piece. Um, you can find information on their website about how to get there, how to get tickets. So I think we should actually stop here and get to the music. We're going to take a short break. You're going to watch a, a little excerpt of one of their videos while we reset the stage to have Irina and Brian play some beautiful music for you. So stick with us. Thank you guys so much. Right, sure, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. from the Poo Link Trio. Enjoy.
French composer, and uh, the French composers in, in Sanson's time were, were very important because they had to write this music for the conservatory, and so all the bassoonists and oboists and flutists and things would have to play this music to graduate from conservatory. So this is one of those pieces. Test. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So good. Um, thank you, Arena. She's yeah, yeah. Thank you, Arena. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. So next I'm going to play a piece by an English composer called uh, Gordon Jacob. And uh, this is sort of, you know, he was writing in the beginning of the 20th century, but this is a very old style piece, kind of a Renaissance style piece. It's like a Renaissance love poem, uh, but it's got kind of modern hints to it. Really short uh, and, and sweet, I think. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Man, I'm kind of running out. Okay. Yeah. One more? Um, do you guys have another one? We could do one more. Do you want to do the first of some song? Shows, I'm sure. That's right, yeah. So make sure to go February 23rd to the Garrett Jacobs Mansion. You can check them out at kulinktrio.org. I'm so happy to have had the bar. Every time, I feel like we have a really high bar of musicians in this room, and it's, I am so excited to have these guys here. The level of professionalism and the beauty of the music that they're sharing with us today is just incredible. I feel really lucky to have Brian wow, and Irina here. So happy to have you. Thank you, you guys. Here. Thank you to everyone who participated. Always thank you to Sean and Dan on the crew for working so hard on this project. And we appreciate you guys spreading the word. Um, this is their last song. And we'll see you next month with Chris Jacobs on February 23rd at 2 o'clock. We'll be missing your show, unfortunately. No. But if you can't make it to see the Pulling Trio, you can watch online. Um, and we'll be posting edits from season one starting next week. So thanks for watching and enjoy. You guys place up.
And who knows which is which?